Now, what's really cool is that AI can transcribe audio with incredible accuracy. It handles different accents, background noise, even multiple languages all automatically. And with the AI SDK, adding this capability is just as straightforward as the other features we've been working with. For this lesson, we'll build an audio transcription feature that can take any audio file and convert it to text. We will follow our usual approach. First, create a route handler to process audio files using AI SDK. Then, build a UI for uploading audio and displaying transcripts. Let's start with the API route. Back in VS Code, in the app folder, in the API folder, create a new folder called transcribe audio. Inside, create a route.ts file. Start with the post handler that accepts a request parameter. Export, async function, host, request of type request. Now let's add the imports we need. Import OpenAI from AI SDK slash OpenAI and the transcribe function. You can see it's marked as experimental, but it works great for our needs. By the time you're watching this, it might be stable, so check the documentation. We will, however, import it as transcribe. Now, audio transcription is different from our previous endpoints. Instead of receiving JSON with text, we'll receive a file upload. Let's handle that. We parse the request as form data, which is how browsers send file uploads. So const form data is equal to await request.formData. Then we extract the audio file. Const audio file is equal to formData.get audio as file. The field name audio is what we will use in the front end form. Next, let's add validation to make sure we have actually received a file. So if there is no audio file, return new response, no audio file provided, the status of 400. Next, we have an important step. The transcribe function needs the audio as a uint8 array and not a file object. So we need to convert it. First, we convert the file to an array buffer. So const array buffer is equal to await audio file dot array buffer. And then we create a uint8 array from that buffer. So const unsigned int array is equal to new uint8 array and we pass in the array buffer. This gives us the raw audio data in the format the AI needs. Now we can transcribe the audio. Await, transcribe, we pass in an object. We set the model to openai.transcription whisper1. Whisper is OpenAI's speech recognition model and it's good at transcription. Next, pass in the audio data we just prepared. So audio, set to uint8 array. Capture the result in a constant called transcript and return it as JSON. Return response.json transcript. Let's make sure to wrap everything in proper error handling. So try block, catch the error, console.error, error transcribing audio, and log the error, and then return new response failed to transcribe audio. Status 500. Our route handler is now ready. It accepts audio files, converts them to the right format, transcribes them using Whisper, and then returns a result. Now for the UI. In the UI folder, create a new folder called transcribe audio, and inside, create page.tsx. We'll start with the basic component structure. We're using the same layout as our other pages, so I've pasted the code. Use client directive, since this is a client component. The component name is transcribe audio page. We have a div container. The transcript will go at the top, and then the form is fixed to the bottom. For audio transcription, we need to handle file uploads differently than text input. So let's set up the necessary state and refs. First, import use state and use ref from React. Within the component, we will define all the state variables. First, we have ease loading and set ease loading, initial value of false for the loading state. 
Next, we have error, set error of type string or null, initial value null. This is for error messages. Next, we have transcript, set transcript with an initial value of null. This is for transcription results. The type is transcript result or null. And we'll define this type in just a bit. Next, we have selected file and set selected file, initial value null. And the type is the browser file type or null. This is to store the actual file object that is selected. Finally, we define file input ref is equal to use ref of type HTML input element. And the initial value is null. This is to access the file input element. We do have a TypeScript error for transcript result. So let's define the TypeScript interface. Interface, transcript result. And this includes the full text so text of type string, and based on the model, it can also include optional segments. So segments, question mark, since it is optional, and this is going to be an array of start of type number, end of type number, and text of type string. It can also include the detected language, which is a string, and the duration in seconds which is of type number. Now that we have all the necessary state and refs, let's create the file input. Inside the forms flex container, input ref is equal to file input ref, type is equal to file, accept is equal to audio files only, class name is equal to hidden, and ID is equal to audio upload. We hide this actual input because we will create a better looking label. The accept attribute limits the selection to audio files only. Now let's add a styled label that acts as our upload button. So right below the input label and based on whether a file is selected, we'll display either change file or select audio file as the text. This label is for the input with ID is equal to audio upload. We will then add a bunch of Tailwind classes to make this look pretty. You can style the label as you see fit, but this code right here is on my GitHub repo. All right, next to the label, we will add the transcribe button. So button, the text is transcribe, type is equal to submit. And this button is disabled when loading. So if is loading is true, or when no file is selected. So no selected file. I will also add some tailwind classes to make this button look pretty. We will wrap the input label and button with another div tag. And on this div, we'll add flex gap two to make sure the input and button are placed side by side. Now let's implement the form submission. Const handle submit is equal to an async function. We get access to event, which is of type react.form event, HTML form element. And within the function body, we prevent the default submission. So event.prevent default. Check that a file is selected. So if not selected file, set error, please select an audio file, early return. And then if it is selected, we set up the loading state. Set is loading to true, and we clear out any error that was previously set. Next, we make the API call. Within a try block, const form data is equal to new form data. Form data dot append audio is the string. Selected file is the value. With this form data, we make the fetch request. So const response is equal to await fetch. The API endpoint is slash API slash transcribe audio, which we just created. Options, we set method to post, and then body to form data. We don't set content type headers as the browser handles that automatically for form data. If the response is not okay, we throw a new error. Failed to transcribe audio. If the request was successful, so const data is equal to await, response.json, 
we update the state with transcript and we clear the selected file and reset the input. So set transcript to data, set selected file to null, and if file input ref dot current, we reset it. Current dot value is equal to empty string. We then add a catch block where we log the error to the console and set the error message. If error instance of error, we call set error with error dot message. Otherwise, something went wrong, please try again. Finally, we can reset is loading to false. Now let's connect this handler to the form. Form on submit is equal to handle submit. Right now that we are able to make the request, let's display the results that we get back. In the JSX, above the form element, add the UI for showing transcripts. So if the transcript state variable exists and is loading is false, which means to say the fetch request has completed successfully, we render a div tag with an h3 that says transcript, then a paragraph tag that renders transcript.text. We will also add tailoring classes to make this look pretty. Now you can optionally add JSX to show the language if it exists and also the duration if it's available. Transcript.duration in seconds. Next, add loading and error states above the transcript display. If the error exists, render a div tag with the error and if is loading is set to true, render a div tag with the text transcribing audio. And finally, for a nice touch, let's share the selected file name and allow clearing it. Above the file input controls in the form, curly braces, if selected file exists, render a div tag with a span tag that says selected followed by selected file dot name and a button that says remove. Button type is equal to button. On click is equal to a function called reset form, which we will define in a bit. And we will add styles to the div tag as well as the button. Let's implement the reset function. Reset form is equal to set selected file to null, set transcript to null, set error to null as well. And if file input ref exists, we clear that too. Dot current dot value is equal to an empty string. This clears all state and resets the file input. All right, the final part, which I forgot to implement earlier, is to handle the on change event on the input. So on change is equal to handle file change. And let's define this function as well. Const handle file change is an arrow function. We get access to event, which is of type react.change event. This is HTML input element. And within the function body, const file is equal to event.target.files of zero. And we access it only if it exists. And if a file exists, set selected file to this file, set transcript to null. So we reset the UI and we also set error to null. All right, that was a lot of code, but our UI is now ready. Let's test it out. In the browser, navigate to localhost 3000 slash UI slash transcribe audio. We should be able to see our form at the bottom. We have a select audio file label and a transcribe button, which is currently disabled. Go ahead, click select audio file and choose an audio file from your computer. You can use any audio file. I've selected an MP3 file with the name sample audio, and this is displayed right above the form. We also have remove button, which removes the selected file. All right, I have reselected the file, and this audio file is basically a small segment from one of my other videos. Click transcribe. We see the loading state transcribing audio. And when the speech to text process is complete, you will see the full transcript and if the model supports the detected language and audio duration. Whisper doesn't support that, so we just see the full transcript text. I can confidently say this transcription is pretty accurate 
But let me know in the comment section, how close was your transcription for the audio file you attached? Audio transcription opens up many possibilities. Meeting transcription services, podcast search engines, voice note to text converters, video subtitle generation, interview transcription tools, and a lot more. Keep in mind that audio files can be large, so you might want to add file size limits in production. Also, longer audio files take more time to process and cost more in API usage. While testing, please make sure to include short clips that are only a few seconds long. All right, let's quickly recap what we built. We created a route handler that accepts audio file uploads through form data. We convert the file to a uint8 array format that the AI can process. Using OpenAI's Whisper model, we transcribe the audio and return the results. For the UI, we built a file upload interface with proper state management. We show the selected file, handle the upload process, and display the transcript with metadata like language and duration. The AI SDK makes audio transcription surprisingly simple. Just a few lines of code to add powerful speech-to-text capabilities to your app. For our next lesson, let's go in the other direction and learn how to generate speech from text.